Hello, this is my response for week 11's question. Um, we focused on Annie Sexton, or Anne Sexton, I'm sorry, and Sylvia Plath this week, and a lot of different poems from both of them, extreme similarities between the two. Um, I think that's kind of what we were supposed to pick up on. <laughs> so I broke both of their poems down into some themes that I found interesting that they shared um, that I also felt represented how their mental illness did string from the patriarchal society that they were forced to engage in. And I have a little bit about someone else. So I noticed that Obviously, both of their poetry was extremely depressed and about death and sad. Um, they both just talked about death a lot. They were, both all of their poems just reflect a lot on the nothingness, reflect a lot on how they feel, a deep depression, preoccupation with death. Um, they've been ruined in some sense or things have been ruined. Uh... It's interesting because not a lot points towards it specifically being self-inflicted. Um, I think that's kind of where we want to take it because they were so obviously depressed. But I think that you can go about the whole depression, suicide thing in a couple different ways. And I don't think that these women were necessarily totally suicidal the entire time that they were writing these more so depressed and finding a release by writing it and finding an art in being able to relate to people on that level. I think it might have been a little more about that. Obviously, both of their actual lives show that they were extremely depressed, but I think that you can take it from both angles. Um, it's in, I thought it was pretty crazy when I turned the page and saw that Anne Sexton had written a poem called Sylvia Plath for Sylvia Plath. I wasn't necessarily expecting that. Um, and the poem was weird, just like the both of them. Uh, it covered a lot about how it seemed that she was jealous. At one part she says, oh, how have you gone forth and like thieved this from me when I wanted it so bad? And I just felt like that was rather odd as I feel most healthy people would think is rather odd. Um, obviously, the depression in a lot of the women's of these times that we see portrayed in literature does stem from the man society that they lived in. Um, being the thought of having to be subservient because of my gender is rather horrifying and I can't imagine having to live in a world where the actual like jobs and I can't imagine just feeling with how I feel about some of it now makes me unable to imagine how it would have been to live back then and not feel depressed from it. I feel like any woman back then was probably suffering from some sort of depression from it or at least extreme self-confidence issues. One of my absolute favorite short stories, pieces of literature of all time, I read last year with my English class, and it is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I'm sure tons of you have heard this one. I absolutely love that story because it really shows how the mental illness can take a hold of someone and make make it like so you can't you can't even trust what you're reading. You can't even trust what the story is because everything has gotten so out of hand with the domination between characters, the paranoia, the mental illness, just the whole story is crazy. And it really reminded me of these two women. Um, also the awakening by Kate Chopin also, uh, really delves into the whole independent woman being forced to live in a society dominated by man. And that really touches on an interesting portion of, um, sexuality, religion, a bunch of interesting stuff there too if you happen to be along this topic the way that I am. I do think that 
their depression was stemmed from the patriarchal society. It was obviously fed by other things in their lives that would have made anyone depressed, but I do think that that was a contributing factor to both of these women and ultimately to both of their works because they produced great pieces of literature because of it.